What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another Tottenham update, your third Tottenham update today. I'm here with Sai. How you doing, mate? Hey, Ben. How you doing, mate? You're good? Yeah, just trying to survive this transfer window, waiting for transfers to come, but nothing seems to be happening at the moment. But we do have a, a few updates to talk about. But, I mean, how are you feeling about the transfer window so far? Uh, it's, it's pretty much like this every year, isn't it? You know, um, on occasion... Uh, we get the excitement at the you know the very beginning, uh, false pretenses perhaps um, positions that we didn't necessarily need. Or, or to be fair, I think Madison was uh, you know top top transfer, top purchase, and I think that we'll get a lot of fruition out of that. But yeah, the rest of them are kind of questionable. You kind of get why they bought those positions in, especially with like Hugo going, etc. But overall, it's kind of like what level are we even at? anymore um, and yeah there's always the talk about removing the dead wood but then now everyone's changing half their minds because of two <laughs> pre-season friendlies which is what we would do as fans including myself so um yeah it's, it's an interesting one i know there's what still a month to go or just under a month so we'll see but i i have no confidence at all in our board or strategy behind anything so uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. Uh, the ingoings, outgoings, obviously Winks went out. But other than that, it's, it's been, I, I say it's been pretty poor overall. And the centre-back positions we talked about the other day, obviously, you know, that's the priority and it's still not done. And how long have they had to sort this out, you know? Unbelievable. Well, it's just funny you should mention centre-backs, by the way, because we do have a centre-back to talk about. Tosin Adarabayo, Rob Guesty from Football London, saying that Tottenham Hotspur are expected to launch a bid for Fulham defender Tosin Adarabayo this week, with others, including Monaco, having shown interest. Spurs have a strong interest in Adarabayo, who is now in the final year of his contract. These are the kind of players that Spurs like to go for, cheap and cheerful. When you're looking at Tosin, I mean, I, for one, I really like Tosin as a player. I think um, he'll come into our squad and definitely add something. It kind of like sorts out that right-hand side of the defence for me with Romero playing the main role and Tosin playing backup. We just need two equally as good players on the left. But I would definitely get behind um, Tosin Adarabai as a signing, that's for sure. What are you feeling? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know... He's obviously kind of just past that age of like up and coming, but he's at that kind of like maturity level now. Probably mm. a similar age, if I'm not wrong, like where where kind of Toby and Jan maybe came in. Yeah. Um, not, not necessarily saying that, that he could be potentially their quality and hopefully he does because he is showing those kind of signs. Uh, but it's, it's, it's almost like a, a really good move, to be honest. If, if you know, the others don't don't pull off, which it, it, they the other ones appear to have fallen off the face of the earth. This one may make more financial sense, potentially, you know, what Daniel Levy's like with the penny pinching. Also, with someone that's in London already, maybe an advantage to make that a bit easier. Uh, but in general, like, from what I saw of him, not I didn't see too much of him, to be honest, I'll, I'll admit. But from what I did see, he was, he was always like a professional, level-headed guy, um, you know, very great in terms of his positioning and everything, where a lot of defenders can be all over the place and very inconsistent. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be angry at all to to see him added to you know the player roster. Um, granted, perhaps not necessarily is in you know the same caliber as the other ones moving toward you, but equally maybe that's where the balance comes, where potentially get one of those ones and bring someone like like him in as well uh, to balance that up a bit, but. Um, yeah, we'll have to see that. Yeah, as we, I think we, we again, we mentioned the other week when I was with you guys. Um, you know, that Monaco link came in. Was that a bit of a PR tactic to get something moving or not? Um, is was it a bit of a strange move? But yeah, I think Tottenham would would definitely make sense. As I said, I, I would personally welcome it. Um, but, you know, he's 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 a top talent, um, and we we need that kind of energy and enthusiasm. I think from the Ange perspective. That's the kind of player we want, isn't it? And someone that he can develop and push forward as well. Yeah, and it also gives Romero just some competition on that side of the right-hand side of the defence. Yeah. And it's just, just that, you know, we're crying out for a partner with Kuti, never mind uh, someone that can provide competition for him. But if we can get here, if he's the only defender that we bring in, I'll be really angry with our yeah. business. But if he's Definitely. like a compliment to a... Taps over or Van de Ven, hopefully more taps over than Van de Ven on the left hand exactly. side. Then I think that's two really good um, additions to the team and definitely something that we can work with and move forward this season. That's for sure. 
Yeah, exactly. But I think the yeah, as we just mentioned, second as well. It's, it's just the monetary side. We can't kid ourselves. Like whether this hurricane saga develops or not, or progresses one way or another, the fact of the matter is, we just there's we, we have money in the back end somewhere. Who knows where it is? But I just it's just not going to happen. It's it's never happened before. And it's not going to happen again. Like, you know, even way back in the bail days, you know, where we, we bought those, oh God, like 100 million players or something, how many it was. The Beatles. We bought the Be- we sold Elvis and bought the Beatles. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it's like, you know, th- there is money. We know there's money there somewhere, wherever it's going, apart from the pockets of the, the board, et cetera. But um, I, I can't see those, those two top line defenders coming in realistically. Um, it would have been done by now. Um, but you know, it's the snowball effect of lack of strategy and thought process, isn't it? And now it's kind of like, oh, what, what else is next? What's coming? It's just a bizarre club that we support. Believe side, believe side, they're coming. <laughs> I mean, I think, look, Tosin, if you get him in for a similar price, which you sell Davidson Sanchez for, I think that's unbelievable business. Yeah. Definitely. And then, you know, you bring in a tap sober. I think if you if we are selling Harry Kane, I know maybe your name suggests that we're not selling Harry Kane, but let's say for argument's sake we are right now. That proves that there's going to be money there for, for whether it be a striker, a winger or a centre-back. And in my opinion, the priority, even if Harry Kane goes, should be that centre-back. Yeah. And I think tap sober should be... Not, look, there'll, be, there'll be no excuses not to bring him in at all. Yeah, exactly that. And I think, you know... It, there's also another dilemma that comes from that um, in the sense that which way around it, it happens. Uh, because if we sell Kane first, you know how these clubs or every club would normally operate is to know, okay, okay we know you've got money. Yeah, and there's already inflated prices as it is in terms of valuations of players, not just in this country, but elsewhere. But that's just going to enhance even further. Um, and they play that ball game. We've seen that many times with ourselves yeah. and we've done it Vice versa, of course. There's there's no non culprit here, um, so you know it's going to be really really interesting. I'm just really disappointed if you know I'm, I don't like talking about this, but if Harry does go uh, to have brought Madison in would be devastating to not have that link up partnership. But equally, what's more frustrating than me in my head over all of this is uh, you know keeping Kane and not getting those centre backs because. You know, just an example of last season alone, the, this poor season that we had. Yes, other clubs did uh, as well, but I'm not interested in other clubs. I'm interested in Tottenham because the amount of money we spend going to games, etc., energy, time, etc. And it's just like, you know, what what the hell are you doing as a club to, to just not do this? Because, and I, I've never said this before in my life, you know, I always say we're going to win the title, we're going to win this, doubles, blah, blah, blah. But it's the first time where I'm thinking we're going to struggle to get in the top six. And honestly, I feel that way. If, if if we lose Kane, definitely. If we keep him, fine. But that defence need, it needs sorting out. It's not good we, enough. You know, so si, that that probably means we're going to win something this year, just yeah. because you're feeling that way. It's it's reverse psychology. I know that if I plant the seed of depression and negativity now. It's a great bonus if it goes the wrong way around. Whereas the other times for the last twenty years, I've done it the wrong way around. I think so. I'm trying to trying to change my method here. <laughs> let's move on and let's talk about a potential striker that could come in if Harry Kane does leave. And he goes by the name of Gift Orban. And there's reports mm. in Belgium. I'm not even going to try and pronounce the publication's name. Um, but they're saying that Tottenham have made contact with Gift Orban's entourage for a potential transfer. And this is a player I've been banging on about for some time now. I yeah, really yeah. believe in this guy's talent. Uh, uh, you've probably seen the compilations I've been putting in the WhatsApp group and all that kind of stuff. But um, after joining Ghent in January, he has scored 20 goals in 22 appearances uh, last season for the Belgian side. He's already scored one goal in one appearance this year. Um, he's all in that repertoire is included the fastest hat trick ever in UEFA club competition where he helped uh, Ghent beat Istanbul back a share in the conference league this year. I mean, this guy has literally come out of nowhere. The club he was playing for three years ago is not even on Wikipedia, um, a club in Africa. He moved to a Norwegian team called Steibeck, absolutely smashed out there. After a season there, he got the big move, got a move to Belgium. He's absolutely smashing up the Belgium league now. 
And I think we need to get this guy in before he absolutely explodes in European football. Yeah, it's it's an interesting one because there's so many examples in the past where we've seen these kind of players, you know, really um, empower themselves in those kind of leagues. But then when coming to the Premier League, mm. don't quite fit the bill. Um, Vincent Janssen is probably one of the ones that fits in my head immediately in that kind yeah. of principle in the sense that he had that same upcoming this, you know, similar maybe if not more goals within a certain season that he started over um, in Holland so that's the only dilemma in my head however of course yeah I mean YouTube compilations obviously highlights the best things it would be interesting to see you know what what inconsistencies he has or perhaps things that he can work on but there's no doubt that he's a talent um, and you know th these kind of players if they have the right management around them, which I do think and is that kind of manager that we would have that ability to do so, I think it could work really well. Um, it's just the question as well, um, is that a replacement for Harry? If Harry's still here, what's his game time going to look like, particularly with Richardson, who's had a, a good preseason? We know he's capable of good things as well. We know Song can play in those areas also. You know, is there too many cooks, as it were? Um, but equally, I'm a very big advocate of the academy. Uh, I saw a lot of Dane down here in the coast last year. Yes, he became almost the third or fourth striker in the end, but he did have some injuries and stuff. But when he did play, there was some substantial you know, performances um, that I saw with my own eyes. You know, Troy Paris there as well. So it's kind of like the, there would need to be some kind of movement around in those areas, whether they loan out again or... or or whatever, because I think they would start getting frustrated. What does that do to the ethos of the academy or indeed those kind of fringe players coming in? But as you say, Ben, like, I know you, you've talked about him so many times. Um, you know, you, you, as I said, the dilemma is there that I've seen this kind of thing before, but there's always that incremental thing in your head where it's just like the talent's there. Have we got the system and structure? I do think with this new system of play and the way that we could be playing, would really fit this quite well. Um, only time could tell, right? And it's just one of again one of those risks things. You just bring the player and see what you can do with it. Um, so it's, it's a bit of a touch and go one for me, a 50-50 kind of thing in my head. For me, the way I see him fitting in is only if Harry Kane leaves. I don't think we need to bring him in or want to bring him in yeah. if Harry Kane does stay. But if he does go, I really see him rivaling uh, Richarlison. Obviously, Richarlison starts the season as number nine. Mm. But I think he does get minutes in the cup, starting yeah. in the cup games, yeah. coming on in games. Remember, we do have five subs as well. So when things aren't going right later in games, we've got bigger cha chances to change things. So I do see him playing a big part as a second number nine if he does come in uh, um, as backup to Richarlison. And I just think the attributes that he has... I think just complement an Ange system exactly what Ange wants from a number mm. nine. He's, mm. he's a pressing forward. He's got blistering pace. I mean, his finishing is absolutely to die for. I think he he can be a top talent. And I, I know what you're saying about t club um, players that do come sometimes from these kind of leagues, from Belgium, from Holland, don't really hit it in the Premier League. But you do get those gems that do. Yeah. And, I, and I believe he can be one of them. And as well, what you're saying about Troy Parrott and Dane Scarlett, I mean... Dane Scarlett is, I think he is going to go out on loan again this season, mm -hmm. uh, probably to League One again. So you imagine League One this year, maybe Championship next year. So that's a good couple of years. Uh, yeah. then he needs to develop big time. He needs to kind of grow into himself as well physically. Gift Orban is a completely different physical specimen to Dane Scarlett right now. Yeah. Um, even though I think he's about a year older or maybe two years older, Gift Orban. He's definitely a bit more advanced in, in that, that area. It's, it's what you said, Ben. The environment around it, it, as long as that clicks, it, it, it could be really massively beneficial and actually really work out. In the past, probably would have said no immediately, but the fact that this this kind of change is going on with the management, et cetera, that's, that's where it kind of swings me a bit more into this could work camp rather than I've seen this before. Um, so All right, size on board the gift or ban train. That's what I love to see. But it, you don't get two carries, like 60 40. So there's a bit more you need to do to push. Don't worry, we got time. We got time. <laughs> Next up is Frank Kessier. Gary Jacobs saying that Barcelona's 
Frank Kessier is set to decide whether he wants to join Tottenham or Juventus. The Italian club have agreed an initial loan deal for the midfielder, but with an option for a transfer to come permanent if undisclosed conditions are met. However, Tottenham hope that the 26-year-old wants to move to the Premier League. We did hear a report a couple of days ago saying his first option is the Premier League. Mm. So if, let's say, we sell Hoybier and he's the Hoybier replacement, what would your opinion be? Yeah, I think... I, I like Heuberg, as, as as you know, um, for kind of like various reasons, particularly like his like leadership quality. Yeah, okay, he's not the the greatest, tidiest of players, but sometimes um, you know there's there's other areas that you can um, perhaps like accommodate uh, in a better way. But for me to to bring him in is is something where I would see is perhaps a bit of an advancement on Heuberg to an extent. Yeah. Uh, I quite like how he's he's very dynamic. He can actually operate not just in that defensive mode. He can contribute a bit more towards the attack as well, potentially. Yeah. So, you know, those two areas are perhaps something where we have missed that dynamic. Now, obviously, Ndombele is kind of uh, in and around things. Well, he's probably disappeared again, actually, I think. But in general um, aspect of that is I think we've missed those kind of versatile players in those areas that can switch the mode of play it's not like we've got so many defensive midfielders they don't want to progress forwards anymore in attack and they're just left behind here and it's like well, where is everyone there's no one to pass to so I think his intelligence on that side of things is a bit more advanced and the position side of it so I would I would massively welcome it for sure um whether that is a replacement for Hoiberg or not, I, I, I suppose it would have to be a replacement because we are really packing that mm. uh, midfield up at the moment. Um, albeit the wings went out, obviously, you know, Madison's slightly different position, but the fact of the matter is that that, that area is, is, is very packed. So something needs to give for that to happen. I think it's not just something that we could bring him in and, and see who's going to fight for these places. Um, but, you know, again, it's just like, for me... Whether that's a development from Barcelona's side, uh, you know, trying to progress this transfer for them to get rid of him, or whatever it might be, why are they trying to get rid of him is another question. But uh, only only they know that, and he knows that. Um, but you know, it, it, it does transpire as to why. Again, are we waiting so long for these things to kind of happen? That's the only question I have: is is it a Barcelona push, or is it something we've gone? Oh, actually, yeah, we need to all of a sudden fix this situation because. It, whether Hoiberg is going or not, or whether they've decided that Harry is weak. Um, yes, okay, Ange is relatively new still, but but you kind of think again, it's like, yo, know, guys, it's like three, I don't know if it's four weeks, but definitely three weeks ish till the window closes. And, and then these decisions are coming out like so close to the Premier League starting. It really winds me up. Um, but, you know, he's a talent, and I think he would fit again similarly. Uh, to get, he would he would actually probably do really well in this kind of system that Ange wants to play, um, and fits that bill of the kind of player that he wants in his team too. Let's say, for argument's sake, we sell Hoybier and we sell Ndombele, Right, mm. that leaves us with a Bentancur who's out probably for the first few months of the season, yeah. maybe more. Skips are Kessier, let's say, let's say for argument's sake, we sign Kessier, Madison, Bissouma, and Lo Celso. Do you still think that's too many? Uh, that's seven midfielders, or what, but one of them's injured for, for a while. Or do you think that's, that's you know, adequate for us to move forward, or do you think that's too many still? I think if we were in Europe and the Champions, or the Champions League in general, yeah. whichever one, I think that would become a potential issue. Um, but because we're not in those, I think we've got such a big focus now in the sense that we're literally going to be playing one game a week. It's going to feel like a long slog until the FA Cup and the the, you know, the League Cup kicks in where there's a bit of rotation, resting players. I don't know what the first 11 looks like at the moment. I've got a rough idea. Uh, but I think what I quite like about that kind of lineup that you just mentioned in that midfield is there's so much variety in the different qualities that the players can bring. Whereas before, yeah. and still to, to this date, really, is there's so many players that are so similar. And it's like like for like substitutes, when actually, do we need to change the game a bit? Do we need to change the dynamic, the tactics? And we just haven't been able to do that. Um, 
Benzica's one of the players perhaps I take out of that equation because, yes, he's so incredible at interceptions and ability to pass forward immaculately and even move forward. He got quite a few goals last season bar the injuries, which was really frustrating. Um, but again, there are a couple of other players like, you know, Basuma is capable of that kind of thing. But ultimately, the other side of the players is very much like for like. So I think that's where we could win that over. Um, but yeah, one one would definitely, maybe two have to go out for that to, to happen and bring those kind of players in. Um, but I don't think it's an, a giant issue with that amount based on the fact that we're going to be playing a lot less games this season and hopefully, fingers crossed, have less injuries um, across the board, especially in that area. Mm. All right. I mean, I, I think it would be an absolutely great signing if we can yeah. get... If we all those three players we spoke about, if we sign those three plus a taps over, I think we've had an absolutely blinding window, but yeah. that is still obviously a lot of things to happen uh, yeah, for, that, for that to uh, come to pass. So... I mean, I'm happy with the names that we're being linked with. I really am. But let's finish off talking about Brian Hill. You mentioned injury before and Marcel claiming that Tottenham star Brian Hill will undergo surgery tomorrow. Hill has been suffering discomfort for months and it's expected to be out for a minimum of two months and therefore will miss Spurs' start to the Premier League season. And a Sevilla publication are claiming that Sevilla want to re-sign Brian Hill, but Tottenham are unwilling to send him out on loan and instead are asking for a large transfer fee. Um, first and foremost, very frustrating that he's injured once again. Injuries seem to be following him around as well as many other players in our squad. Um, what's your opinion on Brian Hill? Would you rather keep him? Would you rather get rid of him? What's what, Where's your head at? Oh, it's a dilemma in my head because I, I think he's a very really good player. Um, but that we've had many good players and if when you're a professional footballer at those kind of levels you have to have that balance of availability um and your know, structure and consistency to your game throughout the whole season um now granted on loan he, he didn't do too badly last season when he was away um but I, you see snippets of him and i'm one more I'm, trophies than harry kane yeah yeah exactly with that too i think like there's probably a partial exaggeration in my head but i i honestly see partial, very small glimpses of what Modric was like when he was younger. Now, not saying that he's that di defensive midfield dynamic aspect tactically, but there's, there's glimpses of the way he shifts the ball when he moves, but the physicality is just not there. And that's not going to help from the injury perspective either. I can see it just happening more often. Uh, but one thing's for sure that we should be very tired of as Spurs fans over the last few years is just the constant players with consistent injuries um you know across the board and you know some injuries just cannot be helped but what really bugs me is the fact that and if the reports are true that this has been something that's been niggling for a few months or whatever it is well he would have known that um on his loan period and he would certainly have known that way before preseason started now whether this is a medical team issue because i've seen it we've seen it so many times with so many players just leaving it and leaving it look at Sessignon. Uh, Son, look at Son last season. Exactly, and it's like, what are you guys actually doing apart from your your crappy YouTube videos of <laughs> people sitting in their in their beds having their heart checked and all this nonsense? What are you actually doing? Because I swear, like, uh, we probably have so many injuries every season, uh, whether things are being missed, whatever it is. But the fact of the matter is, if it was that serious, why wasn't it picked up before? So obviously, like, he'll in my opinion, does need to build on his physicality. That does come with age, granted. Um, but, you know, nutrition and stuff, come on, you want to be a Premier League player, you know you have to be a bit stronger than this. And that does, you know, um, snowball into, you know, building the muscles, building the bone structures, the joints, etc., cetera, to, to compensate for that physicality needed. So I, I just feel like this two months will pass, then it's, it's going to be rehab, obviously, on top of that, then integration, the, the saving grace is that point that I made about you know the bigger gaps now in the matches rather than the consistency of that. Um, you know, it, it could be a few months away, but then coming back, I could just see it happening again and again. And and we've got too many players like this. You know, Sessignon is another one where I'm like, we know he has talent, but we've been talking about that for years. And this could be exactly the same replica here, amongst a couple of other players as well. Um, you know, that this keeps happening to. So this big question in my head about the medical side of, of, of the club, 
but also just like why on earth has it taken this long for you to go oh i've got an actual problem that actually needs an operation come on this isn't something that just happens overnight like you, you know this right so it's, it's really disappointing because i do think he has a great talent there he's still a great age to show that development um and that excitement as a player but you know it's not a great start is it and, and so many players get these kind of injuries all the time at the beginning stages and they never progress to the level that they want to be and that's not what we bought them for we bought them for because of that starlet magnitude opportunity of a player growing over the years and again we're not seeing another one um you know progress how we want as I said, injuries do happen, of course. I'm injured all the, all the time with football, but all that's why I don't play professionally, of course. I thought, but, I thought you, I th you're literally always on crutches. Oh, you crashed I had a concussion two weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> you obviously dislocated my ankle uh, last stage last year. I mean, the list is endless, but I was... Sign him back. up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was, I was trying to come back stronger, but I also know my limitations and like, oh, if I've got a problem, like, I need to sort it out now, not two months into pre-season go, oh, actually, by the way, guys, I'm not available in two weeks, sorry, I've got to have an operation. You know, whichever way around it is, it's just bloody ridiculous. Um, maybe the wind was gusting too hard at Hotspur Way the other day and he blew away or something, I don't really know. But it's just absolutely, you know, ridiculous. Now, that's another player, another player just sat on the bench making money uh, where we're just not watching them play. It's crazy. Look, I, I agree with you to a certain extent uh, in terms of his physicality and that he needs to bulk up. But I do think that um, it is overstated a little bit. I think he has he has bulked up somewhat since he first yeah. joined. I think that just before we sent him out on loan on the last day of January France window, I thought he had a couple of games in the Premier League where he was showing his worth. Yeah. He really started to get to grips with things and he was, um, you know, going going head to head with proper Premier League players and yeah. he was coming out on top at times so I think that I don't think it's too much of a problem as maybe people are saying it is a problem but not too much of a problem but nothing that can't be fixed in my yeah. opinion I think he's got supreme talent and I really believe in what he can bring to a football pitch and I love watching him play yeah. so I I for one would like to keep him but if the man if he's not in the manager's plans he's not in the manager's plans but I think yeah, that I think that he's uh, got a lot of attributes that Ange would like. He's, uh, you know, got a lot of energy about him. He never stops running. Yeah. He's always pressing. Um, and he's got quality with him uh, in the attacking line as well. So I really believe in Brian Hill's qualities. The only problem for me is the way he's always injured. That's that's yeah. what it is for me. So if he can kind of like shrug that off and maybe after this surgery it'll do him the world of good and maybe say, say goodbye to it. But... If we can't get him on the pitch, obviously there's no point having him. But yeah. if he is, if we can get him fit, I think he can be a valuable asset to the squad, definitely as a squad player anyway. Yeah, I, I might get you know, shot down for that. But I, I just believe that um, he, he just resembles, if anyone remembered when Modric arrived or at least saw him before even his Tottenham days, there was, there was just elements of spark of that. And I, yeah. I, as I said, I'm not expecting... The hairstyle, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm not expecting the Modric level, but there's there's things he does. It Maybe people don't watch it enough or, or see it close enough, like maybe I do, but there's, there's things he does that are just like, there. there's something there. Like, But please just stop getting injured. Um, you know, the physicality stuff, as I said, will, will come for sure. I, I would love him to stay. I'm a big advocate of him, but equally, I'm, I'm also getting fed up with all these players getting injured all the time, mm. consistently. And that's not what we want. It just disrupts everything, disrupts planning. Yeah, okay, he's not one of the key players of the team, but you want him to be and want him to develop to be one. I was, what's the point in having him here? Exactly your words just then. Yeah. All right, well, that is that for the Tottenham update today. Thank you very much, Sai, for coming and joining me. We'll see you all very soon. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come on, come Spurs. Spurs.